Hey guys, gals, and toy making pals. Okay, no, I'm sorry about that. I was trying to come up with like a cool intro, but you know what? I'm just gonna keep it casual. So yeah, I'm back with another video. I know it's been forever since my last one, but I'll be uploading a lot more from now on. For now though, let me show you how I made this toy. This video is in two parts, and in this one, I'll be covering the sculpt and mold making. The second video is gonna be about resin casting and cleaning up those pieces. So definitely check out part two if you wanna see the finished toy. So who is Rocky? Well, not the Rocky boxer guy. But uh, yeah, he's a toy I sculpted back in 2015, right after I made my first rock, paper, scissors spinning top. For those of you who know my work, I like to create toys with these simple built-in kinetic play features. You'll get to see his special ability in just a sec. I'm doing some light sculpting to repair the original wax model. He's moved around with me a lot since I first made him, so he's broken into like a million pieces. I don't have any footage of sculpting the original since that was before my YouTube days, sorry about that, but you can watch my other toy making video where I show my sculpting more in depth. I made him with a wax slash clay called CX5. The way it works is it softens with heat, but when it's cooled down, it's hard like plastic. I'm using an alcohol lamp to heat my sculpting tools and then texturing the broken surfaces. To attach the broken pieces, I just need to heat them up and then press them together. This quality was crucial to creating Rocky because I needed to be able to reposition his arms and legs during sculpting so that I could get the right dynamic look. And even more important for that, for his very special ability of his. So what can he do? Well, he does stand up. Uh, not like haha jokes, but literally he can stand on all of his limbs except his head. I spent days, like days, figuring out the right posture for him to get him to balance like this. And as you can see, the repair job I did wasn't perfect since I lost the balance on his left arm. You can imagine just how difficult it was to get everything to balance the first time I did this. Now, if there's anything we learned from The Empire Strikes Back, it's that if things aren't working out, you can just replace a hand good as new. Okay, that's not always true, but let's see if it worked. All right, we got it. So now we can move on to the mold making process. First off, we need to make the mold boxes. I'd already made a mold when I first created this figure, so this is what it's gonna look like. I have the head and the body as two separate pieces. So since I made this mold before, I had some resin casts with the sprues attached already, but if it's the first time, you'll have to add the sprues manually. Here's a picture of how I attached them. You want to attach them in a way that will allow air bubbles to rise out naturally from the mold as you pour resin in. I'll be using foam board for the mold boxes. You can get it at Staples and Art Supply Store or even some 99 cent stores have them. I'm drawing lines for each wall of the box, and a good rule of thumb is you want to have at least a quarter inch clearance on all sides. After drawing all my lines, I use an X-Acto knife to cut out all the pieces. Sometimes I do a first lighter cut to make my line straight, and then I go back and cut it all the way. This section will become three mold boxes for the three molds I'll be making for Rocky's body. There will be three more mold boxes for his head. Also, I didn't show this, but I scored along the wall line so that I could just bend everything into place. You end up with this segmented piece of foam board that will fold into a rectangle. Here's what it's gonna look like. Now I just need to hot glue everything. I first glue each piece to the base. Make sure your base is big enough to accompany any excess hot glue that's going to drip down. Then I glue the mold walls together where the ends meet. I push them together and hold them firmly until they're in place. After letting that cool down, I hot glue the mold walls to the base. You want to be more liberal when you apply the hot glue to make sure to get everything sealed. You don't want to come back in the morning and see that all the silicone has seeped out through a hole in the bottom. That's why it looks like I'm overdoing it with the hot glue, but honestly, I believe it's better to be safe than sorry. That's why I'll be applying some more glue to each of the corners of the mold box. Also, you can kind of see, but I drew lines on the inside wall. This is just a trick I use to keep track of how much silicone I need to pour to make sure I fully cover the piece. You want to pour a little extra as well since silicone shrinks slightly as it cures. Next, I repeat this process for the rest of the molds. This is what the resin will look like as it pours into the mold. The larger channels are for pouring while the smaller sprue is for letting air bubbles rise out. On to the good stuff. We're ready to mix up the silicone. I use mold max 30 which is a 1 to 10 ratio with 1 being catalyst and 10 being the silicone. The silicone is quite thick so it takes a while to fill the bowl. I found that it's quite easy to pour too much, so when I get close to the amount I need, I really slow it down. I use a gram scale to get my measurements exact, but it's okay if you're off by a tiny amount. Also, I had just enough catalyst to do this pour. You always want to add a little extra to make sure the silicone will cure properly. However, don't use too much or the silicone will cure before you finish pouring it. I'm using a spatula and cake batter bowl for the mixing. Seriously, I've never appreciated kitchen utensils so much until I started making toys. You want to go slow in the beginning or you'll just splash catalyst everywhere. I use the spatula to sort of fold the silicone over on itself and allow the catalyst to reach the bottom before I start to really stir it. As I'm mixing this, it turns into basically tubby custard. 
Any of you fellow 90 kids out there will know what I'm talking about. However, don't try to eat the stuff because it's definitely not going to taste as good as they make it look. With all of my molds loaded into the pressure pot, it's time to fill them with the silicone. I'm pouring in a single steady stream to allow the silicone to fill up the mold boxes without trapping any air bubbles. The pressure pot will take care of most of the bubbles by shrinking them down until they're virtually non-existent. However, it's not magic and still needs the bubbles to be of a reasonably small size or else it won't have any effect. Now I'll close the lid and pressurize the pot to 60 psi using my air compressor. If you're just starting out, you can make molds without a pressure pot, but this will give you the best possible results. I'll set my timer to 16 hours. I have a bad habit of snacking too much, so I'm trying to set goals for myself, and if I complete them, I can treat myself to a little snack. Alright, it's been 16 hours and I- Wait, what? Who ate all my snacks? They even left more just to mess with me! There must be a snack thief around here. Maybe they're even hiding in this video. The first person to find them will get a free snack and toy as a reward. Seriously, what's the world coming to when a man can't even enjoy his snacks in peace? <sighs> oh well, it's not the end of the world. Hey, at least the molds came out fine. I'm glad at least something went right. Now I just gotta remove the mold boxes and then open them up. And here are the molds, alive and well. Each one has its own character and personality as you can see. But they will all soon be alike in that I'll be carving into all of them. Mwahaha. <laughs> okay. I did feel kind of bad doing this after drawing the faces on them, but what can I say? You gotta do what you gotta do. I start by cutting the hot glue off the pore spouts and then I cut into them with an X-Acto knife. I'm trying to cut in this curving pattern which will help the molds close back up tightly. They kind of lock together like puzzle pieces. The tricky part is to create a cleaner, straighter cut as you get closer to the actual figures. I took some pictures of the orientation of my pieces inside the molds before I poured them. This helped me estimate where to maneuver the blade so I'm not just cutting blind. The head was the easiest since it's just a single solid shape. The body is a lot more complicated since I sculpted it with the limbs all going in different directions. Now here's my advice. When working with a more complex figure, work from the top down. If you just start cutting everywhere without a plan, it's going to get harder to control where the cuts end up joining. Instead, I tried to just expand one cut further and further, a little bit at a time. In order to see where I was cutting, I had to pry the mold open with my hands and cut at the same time. This really wasn't easy as this mold was thicker and harder to bend and it just wouldn't give. I felt like my fingers were doing crossfit by the end of this. Once I've released the silicone from around all of the body parts of the figure, I can remove it from the mold. It was really stuck at first but I was able to wiggle it out. You have to be careful not to cut too much of the mold or it'll tear right in half. But yeah, that's it. I'm finally done with the molds. That's it for this video, but part 2 will feature resin casting and finishing up the pieces. If you like my videos, feel free to hit that subscribe button or give this video a thumbs up. You can also take one of these little guys home by visiting my web shop. Thanks for watching and see you later.